what I've been doing research on for over two and a half decades now is trust. And so that is why do people trust each other or not trust each other? How does that play out in their relationships? This goes from individual to individual trust, group to group, organization to organization, all levels in between. And we've even found that the things that we've learned apply to how much people trust the largest of organizations, which is the federal government. Most of media is focused on how much do, does the public trust police. Uh, I was approached by a graduate student with the idea that no one is looking at how much do police trust the public. And that intrigued me because it's an important part of the reciprocal trust relationship. If I trust you less and show I trust you less, then you tend to trust me less. Vice versa, if I show that I trust you more, you kind of can't help but trust me more. And this is apparently going on in the police community relationships. Um, so that's what got me started with it. And fact is, because of problems with trust in this relationship, people are dying on both sides of this, this interaction. People are dying. And so it, it's something that needs to be resolved. We found that police who trust the public more tend to engage in more proactive policing which is kind of the opposite of what they're experiencing in places like Baltimore and Chicago that's referred to as de-policing, where the police won't go into neighborhoods unless they're called in for a 911 call. What we find, what we found in this research is that police who trust the public more will engage in more proactive policing, which is starting investigations on their own uh, when they see something that they think is amiss, and, um, and they actually make more arrests. So these things are tied to public safety. When the police stop making arrests, then criminals run wild, and it's, there's been dramatic spike in violent crime. Colleagues David Scorman and Jim Davis and I, uh, back in the middle 1990s, had produced a model of trust and how it works and what comprises trustworthiness. We applied that to the public here, which to my knowledge hasn't been done by anyone. So in the first study, we got almost a thousand police officers all over the country to take our survey online and verify that in fact the way they look at the public uh, conforms with what we predicted in our model. In the second part of the research, we looked at in a particular mid-sized police department. We measured their performance, their actual job performance, and we had the police officers fill out trust and trustworthiness questions that we had developed in the first study and found that indeed they act differently, they behave differently if they trust the public more. And by behaving differently, that means they engaged in more of the things that help to keep the public safe. So the only way that the public can really get this knowledge is if the police partner with whatever community organizations, whether it be the city government or civic organizations, to provide training and provide academies and disseminate this knowledge so that people know how to make the, the police feel more safe and that they feel that the, the public is more trustworthy.